September 1st and today we're gonna do sew with me so today I'm gonna sew and I'm gonna just try to teach you some tips some little things I do and we're gonna work on the layer cake loop pattern and after that we'll take an intermission I have lots of finished quilts to show you lots of new fabric lots of new stuff I am gonna be talking a little bit about an upcoming sew along like a little tease so I have a lot of stuff for you. So I'm gonna kind of jump right in and um, talk to you about what we're gonna sew today. So Layer Cake Loop is a pattern that we released in March, 2023. And it's a completely free pattern on our website and a completely free video. It's called Short and Sweet Beginner Quilt Layer Cake Loop. So I'm gonna pop up an image and show you last year, I started working with all the low volume prints that I have left over when I make quilts or when I have moto cap sets or when I have extra fabric. I really have a hard time using these type of low volume prints in a quilt. So I end up with all this leftover backgrounds that I didn't know what to do with. So let's first talk about what a low volume is. Now I'm going to caveat that with it's really up to your interpretation this might be too busy for some people who have a low volume but to me all of these are low volume they're just a background with busyness in them and so if you look at a fat quarter bundle it's usually just the backgrounds now that's my definition if you look at Camille's it would be like here and here and here it depends how the designer wants to put them in their bundle so here it would be these two it might be this that's up to you might not be so it's really up to your interpretation but for me I really have a hard time using prints like this in a quilt because I really like to use things like this which are more of a background so basically over the last I would say probably six months I have been collecting squares and I decided to do this on this video and what I did is um, on the video we originally released I did the throw size but we always on our shortcut quilts always give size options so this one we have throw lap queen and king so we're just gonna look at the throw and basically all I need is page one and page three because page one tells me the blocks, page um, three tells me what I need. So I needed 36 eight and a half inch squares, 72 four and a half by eight and a half inch rectangles and 36 four and a half inch squares. So I just cut these by collection. So if you look in order, they're all by collection. So what I'm going to do is I just lay them on the board. I'm going to mix it up because you can see these two are the same collection. So to immediately mix it up, all I have to do is um, just change. And this one's already been divided in half. I could change it a little bit more if you want. So I am just going to sew this blindly. I'm going to take off my alphabetes. And for this one... Um, we're going to make, make a total of 36 blocks, and it tells me that right here. Now, if I sewed this entire quilt on here, it would probably take me a couple hours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 12 blocks. So that would be six for the top row, six for the second row, and I'm just going to chain piece 12 and 12. Super fast. I'm going to chain piece them together, and this is what I will be doing um, this is how I sew at home and you're gonna be like, oh my god, does she really sew that fast? I really do But what I want you to do is put your questions in because after I sew when I'm ironing I will focus on answering any type of questions you have and um, Basically, I'm just gonna go to the sewing machine and just sew these together now If I see two that are too similar, I might move it around. I might pin I might not I don't think I am gonna pin But we'll see when I get to the machine I don't think I'll pin for this because it's scrappy and fun and they're really big pieces. But the goal of this, when I make quilts like this, my goal is just to use up scraps. Just use up scraps, mix and match. And then usually these are quilts I give away. Um, my sister-in-law tends to like colors like this. So it's always a great Christmas gift to kind of get ahead early. And it's always, basically what I'm always trying to encourage you guys to do is use the Fat Quarter Shop library of free patterns. Use that, it's free. 
make sure you look at the size options these are leftover fabrics i didn't pay anything for these because these are just things i did not put in my original quilt so i'm trying to show you how to um how to just use your scraps so i'm going to make 12 of these 12 of these and then we're going to iron just start popping your questions in and then you guys chat with each other And so this one, because the board is pretty big and the fabric kind of goes a little bit off, I kind of have to move things a little bit. But basically, I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to sew, and I'm going to sew just like I do at home with like a 1.5 stitch length. Okay, these two are from the same collection so I'm just gonna pick a different just move my squares around so just move them around if you don't want collections to touch And scrappy, I'm just trying to just not worry about anything, just so. And just for the fun of it, I'm just gonna mix up my mix up my stacks just so I'm not sewing too much of the same thing. Okay, that one I cut up my short, my seam allowance wasn't right. And I'm just kind of mixing up, and I think I have 12 here. I'm gonna put them on the, uh, I'm gonna put them on the ironing and we're gonna check. Now these next ones are pretty big. I'm just gonna line them up and kind of Instead of pinning, I'm just going to use my finger. But you can pin if you want. I feel like the sewing machine's going really slow today. It needs to speed up. Okay. Again, just mix around your, and because I'm doing the top two rows, I'm gonna kind of mix it up so that I don't end up with the same collections on the top two rows. And when I'm sewing like this, I usually will watch um, TV, true crime, something, um, and I usually count out loud which is why my count is getting off, but I usually count out loud. So I think I'm on four. I'll just start counting out loud like a crazy person. So this should be five. So this is eight. Mix up my stuff. Nine. 
nine. Two more, and then I've got to do one more from that original stack. And I'm just chaining them all together, not cutting apart yet. And then one more from the first part. Okay, one other thing I wanted to mention is when I told you what I cut, I actually cut more than that. So I would say, um, you know, if it says cut 16 or cut 32, cut 34. What if you're in there and like, for example, sometimes I'll cut something and then just be like, okay, that's too dark. Another thing you'll notice is I really don't have any browns or too much tan. I kind of kept it white and cream um, because I don't really sew with reproductions. But if you do, this would look great in, um, this pattern really is one of those patterns similar to layer cake loop where you really just can't go wrong. It just works great with everything. And one of the things that I do that you're noticing now is I chain piece and I just go and I just, if I was doing this at home, I would have done all 36 because the faster I go, the more quilts I can make. Now I know some of you guys say, you know, it's not really the speed, it's the process. Well, for me, it's the speed and the process. And I'm gonna get to y'all's questions in a second. Do you know how do you know what to sew first on this quilt? So um, I just looked at this pattern right here and it's so simple. So I just, I'm just sewing two of the things and I'm gonna press towards the square here. Um, Loopy Mom asks if I've ever overheated my machine. I haven't, but I will tell you that when I went on retreat, Doug talked to me about there is a Juki industrial machine that goes like 4,500 stitches a minute or something crazy. And it's super inexpensive. It's like $700 or something. And I'm really considering it, getting it. But um, there's really nowhere in Austin for me to try it out. So I'm just kind of hesitant. But this machine at this point is going too slow for me. Do I oil a Juki? Yes, I oil it every time I use it, about every eight hours. And we sell an oil that comes in a pen and that has really worked well for me, that brand. Um, but it comes in a pen form. And then this one we're gonna press towards the big rectangle or big square. So here you can set your seams all at once if you want. Where can I get the presser foot? The presser foot I am using, I bought from Primitive Gatherings. Is the heavy finish starch the same as the heavy hold? I think so. I don't use the heavy hold, but Lisa Von Jean does. So totally up to you on what you do. I'm getting ready to quilt, send a quilt to the long armor. Kimberly, I know you've talked about this, but I, do I need to starch the backing if I've starched the front? Yes, you do. I have a hard time sewing scrappy. Have to do controlled scrappy. Yes, totally agree. And to me, this is a little bit controlled scrappy because I am sewing with all fabrics that were used in previous quilts. So in a way it is controlled because it is all of my scraps, meaning they're things that I already like. But yes, I totally agree with controlled scrappy. Do I use distilled or purified or tap water and iron? It depends, you have to look at the manual on this machine right here we use 
spring water. But I don't even know um, if that's correct, but that's what we do. Okay, now I'm gonna get some pins. I'm gonna get a design board and I'm gonna pin all these together before I go back. And that'll make it super um, easy and, uh, what do you call that? Mass produce, blah, what's that called that I say? Like assembly line? Assembly line. Okay, so then, we're gonna sew these together. So what I'm gonna do is just put these together and I'm going to pin. So when I get to the machine, all I have to do is pin. Now, if I see two that don't look great together, I might move them around, but I probably don't need to with this one. So just pinning it three times. Kathy says, thank goodness Kimberly talked about her smoke alarm adventure. I had one last night and I knew what to do. Thanks, Kimberly. Yes, I talked about that on our floss tube channel. So if you're not subscribed to Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube, I told my little story last uh, Wednesday, but it is Friday and hopefully that does not happen again today. My favorite layer cake pattern is layer cake lemonade. And this one is pretty similar, but I have made the layer cake lemonade several times. I like easy patterns for using up scraps so that you actually use them. They're easy to cut. Haven't been able to watch for a while. Starch question, what is happening with faultless? Is heavy finishing the same as heavy hold? So is there a change in the stores maybe? I haven't noticed. We order it, um, maybe that's why we haven't been, we haven't been able to get it from Amazon, I can tell you that. They haven't been filling the order. So we went to an industrial type cleaning supply place to get starch. So maybe there is a change in faultless. I actually am not familiar. I just know that we were having trouble getting starch for a while and maybe that's why. I can show you the can I use, but I mean, I've had it for a while, so I don't know if they made a change. So this is the one I use. Uh, hopefully it's still out there. The ones we ordered, we were able to get it. When they are available, will Kimberly go into detail about the new Lori Holt planner? Yes, I will. Riley Blake is making that, so I can't pre-show it to you because I don't have a prototype. But yes, I will go into detail once it gets here. I think I need more pens. I'm almost out of pens, sorry. This is why you have two. I, I have about four of these at home, it's ridiculous. For the press flower sew along and the sew sampler, where can I find the fabric requirements and the sizes for the entire quilt? You can find that on Fat Quarter Shop's blog. Our blog is called The Jolly Jabber. And you can just search press flowers and there's a whole post with all the details. My puppy chewed the foot paddle cord to my Juki. He was almost rehomed. Oh my goodness. I'm glad he didn't get hurt. That sounds, oh. That sounds horrible. So let me know, do you guys do stuff like this where you just sit and, I mean, basically this is monotonous sewing, if that makes sense. Like it's just, you don't even have to think, you just go. And then I'll show you um, on a design board, kind of how, not a design board, a design wall, kind of how I lay them out. I'm give you some tips on how to Kind of look at your quilt overall before you start sewing it into rows. So we'll do that in a little bit. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna sew these, pop any questions in. I'm happy to answer anything. And I'm just gonna mass sew these. Now, one thing I am gonna do different is instead of mass sewing these, I'm going to not have to use this at this point. These get so big and behind the machine, they get bulky. So I am gonna cut apart and just toss them to the side and um, um, not do a chain on this. And then my pins, I usually just throw them and if they land in here, great. If not, I'll pick them up all at once. Wow. And 
and my machine came unthreaded, of course. Sometimes when I sew really, really fast, my machine comes unthreaded. And if you're, if one thing I did notice is if your, if your thread gets unthreaded a lot, change your needle. But I know this is a new needle, so we're fine. And I'm gonna cut that little starting thread just because that annoys me. thread it again it's because I'm going too fast but that's the way I sew at home so and I usually use a 90 chrome needle I started trying the 75 chrome needle but I found that the 90 just worked better for me Just, I think I'm just starting too fast. And the Juki does have a needle threader, or yeah, like this thingy. But I don't know how to use it. Oh, it's here, this thing, but I don't know how to use it. And I've watched videos on how to use it, but I just um, haven't figured it out. pretty fast because this is basically a third of the quilt and then here we're going to press towards the bigger the wider piece do I use a knee lift yes I use a knee lift and I use the automatic thread cutter that comes on the Juki that I use will you have all the teal flower magnet pin holder from Lori Holt yes I don't think that's out yet that's coming out later in the year. Will the Lori Holt planner from the past two years be reprinted for 2024? No. What is the little compartment on the bottom of the pen holder you're using and how do you open it? 
So you use it to store pins, I think. And um, we opened it, it's, it's really hard to open. But we did it once on live stream. How is Piggy? Piggy's good, he had a little surgery last week. Um, but he finally got to go back to daycare, he's so excited. It's like 105 degrees here, so I cannot leave him outside. So I'm almost done. What, why am I pinning? Because I've got a bigger piece. So I started pinning because it's a bigger piece. And I mean, just sewing from here to here, you don't really need to. And there's no points, you know, there's no star points or anything at an angle. What is the pink thing on my machine? It's called a string blade and it cuts threads. So basically it would be the same as this. Okay, so now I'm gonna take these and at home what I do is, at home what I do is I just use the floor. But here we have a design wall type thingy. So I am going to just start placing them on the wall. And I'm just paying attention to the direction of this. And I already have it wrong. So no seams should touch. That's how I knew I had it wrong. And every other block is the same. So luckily the design board, I could do it exactly. It's close enough. Hopefully that won't fall. But basically I'm just gonna lay them up here and then I will figure out how to change it because I know there'll be mistakes. Those two seams do touch when you get to that row. So I'm gonna try to do every other block, it's easier. Then this one. So then I'm just gonna kind of look at it overall to see if they're even in the right spot before I try to rearrange. Okay, so it looks like row one is right. It looks like row two is right. So the first thing I do is just see if everything looks right. And then I, if you step back, it's kind of hard to get out of the frame and still be, but step back and just see, is there too much color in one spot? I think it's fine. It's a little light here, but I can deal with that because on the next row, I can just make sure this one is not too light. So what I'll do is grab some pins On the top row, I'm going to put one pin in the top left. The second row, I'm going to put two pins in the top left. You could also use alpha bitties for this. This is kind of like an old school thing that I used to do years ago, and I just don't want to give it up. So I will always know top left, second top left. Let me fix this. So what I'm going to do here is take them off and keep them in order. So row one is going to be like this. One, two. So 
that's row one. Keep them the same direction. Two. Keep them the same direction. So from here, what I'm gonna do is go to my sewing machine and I'm gonna do this. Sorry, I'm gonna like add this one, stop. Add this one, stop. And I'm gonna do the whole row. And then what I'll do is I'll press one row one way and one row the other. Did they, they all looked right, didn't they? Some people are saying that seams are touching. Well, they're touching on the second row. Yeah. And that's okay, they touch on the second row but not the first row. And um, what I'm gonna do here is show you another way you could do this. This is not what I usually do, but it's a, it's a, what you could do is just do this and pin. Before you ever go to the machine, pin the whole dang thing together. And then you know it's not wrong. So pin top and bottom, and then that way I can answer questions while it's open. Can you remind me which Juki I have at home? I have the Platinum Edition, but it's basically the Juki 2010Q. I think the Platinum Edition is now discontinued. But it's the same thing. I, I do really want a commercial Juki though. Now this one, two seams did touch, so seams ended up touching that I didn't think would, and I'm gonna pin in that intersection. And this right here, I'll fix that later, that little. So you can just pin the whole row together, then you know it's right. Why would you use starch? I use starch. I've done several videos on it. I love starch. It's, um, I like my, I like everything to be crisp. So it's a personal preference. Do you think I will ever do a tutorial with Christopher? Okay, Christopher who? Christopher, my son, or Christopher Thompson? We've done some with Christopher Thompson. My son, Christopher, I don't know. I mean, he's been on here. He's a jokester. I don't know if I can trust him to not do a little dance. He's, um, he's hilarious. He says he's built different. So I want to make him a quilt that says, um, using the spelling bee book that says built different because he says it all the time. It's hilarious. Um, have you used a Laura Star iron? Yes, I love it. I am gonna do a review in the fall, but yes, I love it. It's super expensive. I didn't think it'd be worth it, but it is definitely worth it. Um, it does make everything go a lot faster. The disadvantage is it's really out of most people's price range. Okay, row two, I'm gonna do that same thing so that I can keep answering questions. And this kind of just makes it where you can just sew, sew, sew. Your son, oh, well. I'll have him watch this video and let him decide if he wants to do a tutorial. But he's a jokester. He'd have, I don't know if I could trust him on camera to, to not do something crazy. But I mean, if my kids want to come on video, they can, they can. Emma would not, I can tell you that. She does not like me to show, I haven't shown as many pictures of her on the video. She's like, mom, can you just stop showing pictures of me? I don't like it. So I don't know. You know, she's developing her independence because she's 16. So, oh, when did I start the pieces I'm working with? That's a great question. So I, when I first get all my fabric, before I do anything, I starch it. So I starch it once, and then these are left over from the piles. Um, and this weekend, I'm going to actually be working on some scrappy blocks and so I will have more and then I will have um, from that stack I've already pulled all my low back no low volumes but after this quilt is done I'll have to come up with another low volume scrappy quilt so if y'all have any ideas you can drop them in um, but basically what I'm trying to do is show you how to use up all of your fabric so I've come up with some scrappy quilts um, and I try to use patterns that are free just to kind of show you what you can do and not have to always spend money. What table do I have my machine in? Kangaroo table. And we sell those now. It's actually really good quality. I want one for my house, but I'm sure Kevin's going to be like, no, thank you. Okay, I'm going to take a sip of tea because I am thirsty. Okay. I am going to just take this one and sew this one, put it back, and then come back and get this one and sew this one. 
and you just have to be kind of careful that you don't poke yourself. Thank you to the Bathola for the super chat. Thanks for all you do. Thanks for watching. Okay. So yeah, this is a new table. We started carrying tables and irons and all kinds of things. So I'm kind of from here going right to left because the machine's on the right. So then you just kind of flip it. And just so. Going left to right would be harder. Okay, so I'm gonna do these last two seams real quick. I have a pin hiding. Throw this on the ironing table and then grab my next row and go right to left because that just keeps all the pins to your left. Okay, so from here, what I'm going to do is, this is row two, I'm gonna press everything to the left. I know it's row two because of my pins and I'm gonna set my seam and press to the left. My iron keeps spitting out rust spots. How do I stop that? Um, it's probably the water in your machine and you probably need to Clean it, flush it out, use vinegar. I would Google that. Have Jordan come to your house and figure it out. That's pretty much what I do. <laughs> but different irons, some use distilled water, some use tap water. It really, each iron, it, you really have to read the instructions. So for the Laura Star, it just uses sink water. Okay, so now that I have that done, I'm gonna kinda look, make sure everything is nice, I don't see anything crazy. I'm gonna put this on my cutting table.
okay? So on that, I press towards the right. I press towards this way. Now this is row one. Flip it and press the other way. Will I be making blockheads five? Yes, I gave a tease last week. I will be using the Old Glory collection and I will be showing that when I do my monthly sewing check-ins and I will show pictures on all social media the week the blocks come out. Now there is two sections of mode blockheads. The first section I'm using Old Glory. The second session, which is 2024, I have not decided yet what fabric I'm using. When do you receive the Kimberbell Nativity Bench Pillow Supplies? That one I didn't pre I didn't set my seam and that's why I did that. Um, we'll have to check on that and follow up with the manufacturers and see why they haven't shipped ours yet because I don't know. Okay, so from here, I've laid it on the table with my one pin and my two pins. I'm gonna lay it out. Thank you to Jody Stancliffe. Watching your videos has helped me in my accuracy of my piecing. FQS is the best. Thank you, and thank you for watching. So from here, I'm gonna put this right sides together and I'm gonna pin every intersection. I usually kind of start with my bigger, the block intersections and then go back. Thank you to Susanna Pastorick for the super chats. Piggy says, thank you, he gets some little treats at daycare today. If I use, let's see, Chantel, I use a Juki quarter inch foot with the rail because if I didn't, have the rail, I couldn't keep the quarter inch accurate. Any suggestions? That's what I do. I use the one with the rail. That's why I'm able to go so fast. I have a kangaroo table and was wondering if the insert that you have on there is the needle pretty much centered to your chair. It's the needles really far to the left. And we also have in there the Joey cabinet. Um, so it's a little bit to the left compared to the one I have at home. Why should you not starch flannel? Okay, so flannel, it will kind of bubble or it'll just get like a little residue on it. So that's why, um, and I only press once my starch is 100% dry. So here, once I've done the blocks, I'm gonna go through and if there's a seam, I'll, um, pin it. If not, I'll just pin, but I'm going to pin about three times in between the blocks. And again, this one is 36 blocks. I'm just showing you 12 because from there you could figure out, it'll probably take me an hour to do this on camera. So this would probably take two and a half hours at home total. Happy Friday, Kimberly and crew from Holly Martin. I get to meet Holly at CrimeCon. I'm so excited. Oh gosh, Holly. So yesterday I printed out the schedule and highlighted everything I'm doing. So I cannot wait. You know, it's, it's horrible that as a mother, I'm so excited about my personal vacations rather than my vacations with my kids. My daughter is doing, Drill Team is going to Disney World or Disneyland, one of those. And I think she wants me to be a, um, like a, what do you call that? Like a chaperone. But I'm like, I'm like, I don't know, I want to do that. But I'm, so I paid for her. You have to pay. The Booster Club pays for most of it this year. But um, you had to pay and sign up. So I signed her up, but I didn't sign myself up. And I thought, oh, we'll see if I ask her. Okay, now what I'm going to do is take these two pins out. But I am going to leave this one in because that will always be my top left. Where can I get the sizes for these blocks? So what you would do is go to fatquartershop.com, search layer cake loop. It's a free PDF printout. Okay. 
So then I'm going to go to my machine and what I will do, my tip for you on doing rows is, okay, you have to kind of pay it. Okay, so like I unroll, I, I do it a certain way. And then, so I've got it all rolled up and then when I do it, I kind of unroll as I go. But if you do that, this kind of sits in your lap instead of on the floor because if it's on the floor, it's going to drag and it's going to pull this. So just kind of start here. So yeah, so right here, I would say the middle, the table for the person who asked, this is kind of the base right here. My needle's pretty far over to the left. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna set my seam. Now, see this kind of split? I'm gonna leave it. Different days, I'll leave it. If it looks funny on the other side, I will fix it, but today, mm, I'll leave it. Depends what kind of mood I'm in. All of my quilts will look different, and, and Denise can vouch for that, but all of my quilts end up looking different depending on what kind of mood I'm in when I'm sewing, and I just dropped that, sorry. Okay, so I set my seam. Finger press towards whichever side you want. That will help it lie flatter. And then put the iron right on that seam. And this is when it helps to have a really big ironing board. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna take this off because I don't use these when I am doing, piecing it together. Sorry. Now what I'm gonna do is go over this. Oh, I just poked myself. I'm gonna go over it. I can't believe you did that whole thing without stopping. Yes, that's how I get my quilts done. Yes, I'm so excited because this weekend I'm going to get to sew a little bit. So, Christopher's a football game. Well, tonight there's a football game. I have to deliver Chinese food at 4 o'clock. So nervous about it because they won't let me through and then I have to walk half a mile with Chinese food. And I'm a, like, I am not very strong. So, I'm going to see if they'll let me through the gate. But there's a football game tonight and then football game tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Nice and hot in Texas. So, from here... Put this on here. And this is when it gets really heavy. So sometimes when I use boards like this, I will have to put a couple of pins in. Sometimes I have to, sometimes I don't. Um, but that's how you build a quilt. And it's kind of fun if you do it in those increments of like three, 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 or um, you could do it all at one time. So I built 12 blocks and two rows. There are a total of six rows. That took me 50 minutes. So if I wasn't on camera, I could have probably done that in 40. So I would say you could probably get this done in two hours, two and a half. Thank you to Candy Carpenter for the super chat. Let me see what other questions we have before intermission. Does Moda still make the Hexi pre-cuts? They don't, but they do have like a little template they sell now. 
Thank you for the video. You got me motivated. Yay! Maybe I can motivate myself because I'm going to wake up. My goal is to wake up at 6 a.m. tomorrow and just start sewing. I'm going to try to have, I have this list. Well, you know, I have all these lists. So I made my list and I'm going to have try to have all those blocks done before I leave at 3.30 for the football game. So super excited. Uh, drop any questions in. When we come back, I'm going to be able to show you my summer memories quilt, my vintage kite quilt, my socialites quilts, and then lots of other things. Super fun. But um, hopefully I've taught you something. My goal in the sew with with the sew with me's is to actually teach you something and give you, you know, even if I if I give you 10 tips, maybe you use one. And you can see if you like it, if you don't, that's fine. But I'm always trying to come up with different things to show you on the videos. So I will be back in about two minutes and stay tuned.
answer the remaining questions and then we're gonna have a fun trunk show. You're gonna love the quills, so excited to show you. Um, Peggy asked a great question. Could you just use the full 10 inch and use your cuts to five inches instead of four and a half? Yeah, but then you, you might have to, I haven't checked the math on that, so I'm not sure if it would exactly work, but you could put your pencil to the paper and try it. Um, I haven't tried it yet. What do I use to clean my iron? I use this product that, who knows if it's here. What is it? Let me see. Here it is. It's called Dritz Iron Off. So we use this and what you do is you put it on your, I don't know, watch the video. There's a video on YouTube on how to do it from Dritz, but that's what I use. And let's see, dragonflies for Donna. How do you know which item on your list to start with or to include on a day when you wanna get things done? I often feel like everything is equally important and get stuck. Okay, so great tip for this. Now, it might not work for you, but what I like to do is whatever's my least favorite, do that first, or whatever's easiest, do first, because then you get that out of the way. So if you do the easiest first, you get a lot done and you feel really motivated to finish. If you do what you don't like first, or you like the least first, then you're super motivated to get to what you really want to work on. So kind of do that. Kind of like motivate yourself. Um, it's kind of like, you know, oh, if, like if you want to motivate yourself, like, oh, if I make 10 blogs, I get some chocolate. This kind of the same thing. Can you recommend any patterns or books for fat eighths? So we have a lot of free fat eighth patterns, um, fat eighth flip, and if you just search fat eighth shortcut quilts on fat quarter shop, you'll find lots of free patterns. Oh, this is a good question, Melinda. Does the kangaroo table come partially assembled or completely unassembled? It is not assembled and it does take a while to get it assembled. Thank you to Jordan uh, for putting it together for us. Thank you to Linnea Reese for the super chat. Okay, so before I show you this quilt, I'm going to tell you what it is. It's from the Su Summer Memories book. We had a, there's a summer picnic quilt in the book, and we did a sew along. I used um, Minnick and Simpson fabrics from lots of different collections in the past. I've talked about which ones I used, um, but I'm going to show you the quilt all quilted. So this is how it looks at the top. and then I'll show it to you on the table. Thank you to Maggie Honeyman who quilted this for me. I did use triangle paper, the one and a half inch uh, triangle paper from Triangles on a Roll for this. And I just used a lot of varieties of fabrics from Minnick and Simpson. And then Teresa put the label on after it came back, kind of in the corner. So what she did is you can see this is all quilted this she hand sewed down and then this is just hidden within the binding. So I'll kind of Now in October there will be a brand new book called um, celebrate with quilts book it will be by the same author as this book with a combination of Lisa Alexander so Susan Aki designed summer memories celebrate with quilts will be coming out in October and we will have two sew alongs with it I'm gonna kind of flip through da, 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 da. I can't tell you which ones I can tell you I'm gonna sew along with both quilts are gonna be totally awesome you're gonna love it and I am going to be using um, I haven't decided, but I mean, I might use the collection. I might mix scraps, we'll see. Um, this one, the one thing that I did do different from the sew along that Susan Aki did in her quilt is she used a different background or low volume in every block. And I decided to just use the same background throughout. And the fabric for this, somebody asked about the outer border. It's from Sunrise Side. I don't even know if that's come out yet. It might have. I don't know if it's out yet, 14968-11. My cornerstones are from the Isabella collection. My binding is from the Isabella collection. And this right here is from Sunrise Side. This is 149 
and I ended up with a red um, stripe. Can you see it? So yeah, it's a stripe. So that's what I ended up putting on there. Thank you to Janine, Jeannie Williams for the super chat. Okay. Now the next sew along was a little bit earlier than that one. And it was the vintage kite quilt along and it was 10 rows. And so we did it over 10 weeks. You needed two pads of the six inch vintage kite paper by Lori Holt. And then this is a free printout that you would find at Fat Quarter Shop. You just type vintage kite and again, two of the pads. And then I use B vintage for the collection. This one's a little bit bigger. So pretty. So all those colors, so fun. And so with this one, okay, I'm gonna turn it this way so it doesn't drive me crazy. This one is also quilted by Maggie Honeyman. So this one, I used one background. This is C747 Alpine. I used that throughout the entire quilt. Then I used the B Vintage Stackers or a Fat Quarter Bundle, but I did take some of the lights out. Not all of them, but just some. I used less lights than I did the darker. The inner border is, um, uh, this is that same background. The middle border is 13083 Cloud. The outer border is 13073 Cottage. And my binding is 13076 Cottage. My backing is a 108 wide back. It's a uh, wide back 130920 pink. And then I'll show you my label. It's also in the corner. So it's that same thing where um, we just use that same fabric that's here. I think it's the same fabric. Just whatever's left over and just put it in the corner. This one finishes at 64 by 76 and super awesome. But I love this tight quilting. Love it. And I, I think this is great because this can be in every, you know, one thing that I find when I'm picking quilts to make is I so much make so many fall quilts, so many Christmas quilts, and I sometimes just don't have everyday quilts. So this is a great everyday quilt. It will pick up the aquas and the yellows and the grays in my house, put it on the back of a couch. Um, so that's where I'm going to put it today. I'm going to take it home. I'm going to put it on the back of my couch, and it's going to be an everyday quilt. Can't wait to use it. The next quilt is the Quilted Witch. So this one has not started the quilt along. The quilt along will start in October. Um, so this one finishes at 76 by 89 and none of this is out yet, but this one, usually what I do is I sew along with you guys. So when you're sewing, I'm sewing, but this time I did reverse. I sewed the quilt ahead of time. And thank you to one of the customers who called and let me know about my mistake that was right here because we got that fixed just in time. So I am going to show you the quilt, all quilted. This one is really big. I'll tell you the size in a little bit. And one thing is uh, you'll see part of the binding's done, part of it's not done. And that's totally fine. But we got it back and wanted to show you. So I'll show you my border. I mean, I'll show you my, my label and then I'm going to show you the front. And this one. So this one, she did a swirl and um, let's see, Maggie Honeyman quilted this one. Um, Lori quilt, Lori picked the pantograph for this. Well, Teresa gave options and then Lori picked and she picked this. It's like a swirl and then bubbles around it. And so this is how we do our binding here. And just so you can kind of see, we did add the vintage trim in here. And we leave the quarter inch, pull it back, and hand sew it. So we'll pull it forward. And this one has a busier background, um, but this one's gonna be so cool. So fun to sew along. I will be sad because when y'all are sewing along, I will just have to show my quilt. I won't be able to show any blocks because all my blocks are all quilted. 
so it looks really good. And then we'll show the other side. And here you can see um, the binding. And what she does is she puts on, um, let me see, show the, like right here, she has, she just puts on like 10, Teresa does my binding. So she puts on like 10 wonder clips, stitches, and then adds 10 instead of wonder clipping the whole thing at one time. Um, if it was me, I would wonder clip it at one time because I could go faster. So yay, we got this back. I also got two other quilts back, but I'm not gonna show you yet because I'm saving it. Oh, and the backing is, uh, this is not the suggested backing. This is, uh, this was in stock, so we used this. This is a different backing than written on the pattern. Now, earlier in 2023, we finished Socialites. And so that is a whole program. We did some Sew With Me. We had a lot of fun. And with this series, we had three inch blocks, six inch blocks, and nine inch blocks. So what I decided is I put all of my six inch blocks into one quilt. My three and nine aren't in anything yet. They might eventually make it in a quilt. They might not. I might auction my blocks. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with them, but for right now, I've got my six inch quilt. And again, this is a completely free pattern at Fat Quarter Shop. That is not my stomach growling. That is somebody else in this room's stomach. Okay. So completely free, socialites too. And this one, Maggie Honeyman quilted, it looks so awesome. So let's see, okay, so we did the, the, the um, label here. Let's see, let's show the whole thing. And I tend to put on the back of my quilts, one thing you'll notice when I pick it, I love to put a big floral on the back and I love this quilting. It's a, I think it's a quarter inch uh, cross hatch and I love it. So. And this one, Teresa got the binding done this week. So we were able to show you and um, I'd love to see if you show it, show us on social media, your quilt so we can see what you finished okay hold on before you move the camera hold on Jordan. okay will the quilted witch be available at the beginning or end of september it will be october wait mid to late september have i picked a pattern for jelly roll day yes we're going to talk about it in a little bit right yes so we're going to cover that in a little bit how much peachy keen do you need for the peachy keen quilt in the celebrate with quilts book we're gonna grab that book is the witchy quilt quilted witch advanced i would say intermediate to advanced it's not too hard at all it's just a lot of steps okay i'm gonna look at this peachy keen let's see I don't know what quilt is peachy keen. There's not a quilt in here that's just peachy keen. So I'm not sure. How do you piece the white fabric square on a jelly roll? How do you piece the white fabric square on a jelly roll? That looks super hard. Denise, do you have any idea? White fabric square on a jelly roll. Be more specific, because I don't know. How do you know which side to set your seam? I usually follow the pattern. Okay, so now I'm gonna move into like follow-up stuff, new stuff, um, and then some quilt kits that I didn't piece, that kind of thing. So first I wanna start with the Lori Holt Fat Quarter Club. So this one we started early summer and we sold out twice. So I'm showing you this a little bit early. This will be the October Club November Club, December Club. 
Now, we are gonna open spots Wednesday, September 6th. That is next Wednesday. If you wanna be in the club, put an alarm on your Outlook calendar, your phone, whatever, so that you can get in before it sells out, if it sells out. We did order enough, so hopefully we don't sell out, but since it has Lori's name on it, it will probably sell out. So please put that on your calendar for Wednesday, September 6th. I also wanted to show you these. I have been working on the Spangled Quilt Along. Well, it's just a quilt, but I've been doing the Spangled Pattern by Kim Deal using the first three bundles from the club. What I'm going to do is starch these. I will take out the purple, so I won't use these two purples. Um, one day, I'm gonna eventually use purple, but for now I can't. I, um, but I kind of save them, so maybe we'll save all the purple fabrics from a year or something and give all the purple away at one. So, um, at once. So anyway, um, and I'm going to work these in with my spangled. Um, I'm probably gonna do like half with this and half with the others. Okay, so this is a preview for everyone who wanted to see. And Denise came to the rescue. Blueprint Quilt is from the Celebrate with Quilts. You need 10 fat eighths and 15 fat quarters. So that's what you need to make it this way. What is the quilt pattern to the right behind Kimberly that squares? Oh, we'll find out. Do I ever enter your quilts and shows? I don't. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about our monthly sales. Since it's September 1st, I can show you what's gonna be on sale this month. Now, um, this month the fabric, 20% off B Basics, so I just grabbed a B Basics Fat Quarter Bundle. It's by Lori Holt, so that will be on sale until September 30th. Clover is our notion of the month. So this is a great time if you use Clover products. If you need more, stock up now while it's on sale. Prairie Grass Patterns is our pattern vendor for the sale for September. Kaleidoscope Quilt and Cross Stitch Book by Lori Holt is on sale. So the fabric is 20% off, the notions, patterns and book 30% off so great deal um okay on uh, we had a question about the quilt that's behind me so this one right here this was a jelly roll scrap quilt it there's no pattern it was just a video so ashley will link the video but it's just a fun um use one background square sat up uh, put Jelly roll strips around it and throw it together on point. Super easy. Okay. Simply Jelly Roll Books is here. I'm so excited. So, one of the questions we had is, what will I be doing for Jelly Roll Day? So, we just posted this on our blog. We announced it anew, so along with the book. So, you do need to buy the book. Then you're going to download the fabric requirements now, which is right here. Then you're going to come Saturday, September 16th, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Totally different time, 2 p.m. That is National Sew a Jelly Roll Day. We will have a special live stream with me sewing, and we're going to talk all about tips on working with this. I am going to be sewing this, and I will be sewing this using the Lighthearted Collection by Camille. That's why it's colored this way, because that's what I will be sewing along with. Oh, okay. So this, we're gonna sh first show, that's just a sampler. So we, we did some colorways. These are all on our blog and on social media. So we just put together, like if you just wanted to do something generic, that was the solid. The second one is Peachy Keen. This one, that's how it could look if you colored it that way. This is lighthearted. This is exactly what I will be sewing. Bountiful Blooms, which also arrived this week. That's a colorway in that. And then we colored B Dots with Lori Holt. So they all look different. I'm going to show them to you again. We're going to give you about 10 seconds in between. 
but you can go at any time to our blog or social media and if you're inspired by one of these print it out as an image and use it as a guide now the fabric requirements you need one jelly roll five and an eighth yards of background and inner border one and a half yards of that checkerboard background and outer border which on the one you're looking at right now is that pink binding seven eighths of a yard and backing seven and five eighths now I'm going to flip through the book a little bit so we just have beautiful photos I'm going to flip so you can just see the photos so you can't see the instructions is what I'm going to try to do so we always, anytime we come out with a fat quarter shop, it's so Emma book, we do sew alongs to promote them so that not only would you use the book to make quilts, you would use it to make a sampler because I happen to love samplers. And I love um, getting more use out of a book than just the book, you know? We want you to buy the book, of course, but Really, we want you to enjoy the book and actually use the book. And sometimes I find when we have a book, it comes out and then people don't use it. So we always try to give you the most of the most possible out of a book. Any questions you have on this book, let me know. It is 1995 and it has 16 quilts. And so for Jelly Roll Day, again, that is September. What? 16th, sorry. September 16th, 2 p.m. Central Time. And, um, Fabric requirements are all available now. This is a brand new quilt kit. It's called Be Still My Heart. This is the Lighthearted Collection by Camille Ross Kelly that arrived this week. It's 51 by 51. It uses one Jolly Bar. So you can buy either the kit or the Jolly Bar. That's the only way you can get this pattern. I'm gonna show it to you on the table. So right here, move my drink, sorry. So when you look, this is the white on white from the collection. This is different, but just so you know, this is not a Bella, it is the white on white. Um, designed by Angel, pieced by Angel, and quilted by Sarah Campbell. Does she have a label on it? Oh yeah, she does. really cute so what she always incorporates is the salvage there's always words on and it says wherever you go go with all your heart so she incorporates the salvage in here and then she always uses an Ada cross stitch cloth and she puts her initials and the month and year the next kit I'm gonna show you this is from Robert Kaufman it is a completely free pattern you can download at Robert Kaufman it's called Among the Stars. I'm gonna show it to you in two colorways. And um, just kind of show you how they write their patterns. So there's Pastel Glacier. So this one is pastel. It's flannel. It's called Pastel Among the Stars Quilt Kit. And then we'll show the, there's not a label on this one. Okay, this one was pieced by Angel, quilted by Joanna Marsh. Any of our long arm quilters, we have a blog post on how to contact them. This pattern is designed by Elise at Robert Kaufman. It finishes at 48 by 54. It is flannel and I wanna show you something fun with the binding. And this one is a cloud motif for the pantograph. This is a really cool thing that um, Angel's been doing where she, can you zoom in? Where she, um, hand stitches the binding down so she's using um and she's using floss it looks like she's using three strands 
And if this is something you're interested in, we could always do a video on it if that's something you're interested in doing. So that was pastel. This one is Glacier Among the Stars. Same collection, which is Cozy Cotton Flannel. Cozy Cotton Flannel has been around for years and years. They always just kind of refresh their colors, come up with new colors, keep the best sellers. This one was Peace by Teresa. Also quilted by Joanna Marsh and using that same free pattern. You could also do this pattern in cotton if you wanted to. It didn't, doesn't have to be flannel. And this one, do you know how she did this one? Mm -hmm. So this one Teresa did using also floss. That's got about six strands. So if these are, do you want to zoom in? If y'all want to see a video on like accenting your binding, um, you know, Teresa and Angel can teach us what they did and we can show it to you. You'll just have to comment and let Ashley know if that's something you're interested in. It's really fun to do that on flannel because flannel is softer. So getting your needle, um, because you're probably, this is pretty, you might have to use a tapestry needle. So um, the hand stitch does not go through to the front. Okay. Okay, is the, okay, I'm gonna show you new fabric. Oh yeah, leave it right there, that's good. You can really see it, okay. We have a question, is the blue and the lighthearted blue or aqua? It is aqua. So that is lighthearted by Camille Ross Kelly. Now this one just came in this week. So we have kits, we have yardage, we have jelly bars, we have everything. It will sell out at some point. We will be doing so many things with this collection. I can tell you some of it will sell out. Um, let's see, Candy, Sandy K asked, will the Shine Bright quilt kit have the lighthearted white on white as the background? We'll ask Nova and get back to you because I don't know the answer off the top of my head. So this one is lighthearted, so pretty. And um, this one I will be doing for the Jelly Roll Day and I don't think I have anything else planned yet, but I did really want to sew Brick House with this. I just never got the time to do it. The next collection that arrived this week is Bountiful Blooms by Sherry and Chelsea from Moda Fabrics. And this one, um, they've changed their colors a little bit. There are two golds, two dark peaches, three light peaches, maroons, aquas, greens, grays, and whites. This one, I think we have the pre-cuts, but not the yardage, but I'm not sure. We're gonna look to see if we have yardage. No, just pre-cuts. So the yardage should come any day. The next group from Moda that we got is Quaint Cottage by Gingerbur. This one has um, navies. This is like um, kind of a marine blue, acornish brown, pinks, olives, and some backgrounds. So what was the answer to that question? Oh, we're still looking. We don't have an answer yet. Sorry, we're still looking. Okay, the next collection by Moda is Sunflowers in My Heart. It's by Kate Spain. It has a beautiful panel. I will open and show you the panel. And this one is very true to sunflower colors. Um, yes to the shine bright quilt kit includes the background from the lighthearted collection as the background. So this is the panel. So you, it's um, 23 by 44 and you could make panel. Pillows, sorry. And Kate Spain does have some merchandise on her site starting this week. She has some bags, 
that coordinate with Moda Blockheads 5 if you wanted merchandise to um, store all your stuff in. The next collection we received is Jane Austen at Home, Pride and Prejudice. I am going to open and show you some of the pieces. So this is by Riley Blake, and it's licensed art from Jane Austen's house that is in Europe. And this is kind of a newer we originally, I don't think, carried her stuff, but we got a lot of requests, so we started carrying it. We also are gonna start carrying the Liberty collections because we got a lot of requests for that. And I am gonna open two of the prints to show you. These two are the same, but just so you can see the sampler feel. And then this one has multi, it's the same print, but with multi-colors. So I'll open that once I move all this off. So same print, it's just colored. The next collection is called I Love Purple. It is by Judy Rothermel, and it's just beautiful reproductions, you know, 1800-ish prints, and just beautiful true purples. There are a couple of different shades of purple within here, which will give your quilt some texture and movement. and then we put the lighter fabrics on top. This is by Marcus Brothers and Judy Rothermel. Also by Marcus Brothers and Judy Rothermel is um, Aunt Grace Calico. So Aunt Grace is a theme or style that came out from Judy Rothermel like in the 19, 80s or 1990s. This is the first time she's come out with a 1930s collection in a, in a long time. So I'm going to flip through and show you. And they're always very dainty. Sometimes there are motifs. This time it is more of just a calico floral-ish and without the novelty prints. And this one came this week. This one is like my kitchen from when I was a kid. So again, Aunt Grace Calicos. We received a collection by Seth After for Free Spirit. It is called Storyboard. I think this is his first collection. So very graphic, grungish look. So that's his first collection. And then also from Free Spirit, we got the brand new cave collections in. I'm not gonna open all of those because that would be hard to re-put together. But the way that cave comes out with collections he always has a ton of SKUs and a ton of different pre-cuts. So all of this that I'm showing you, this is Pastel Fall 2023. This is Hot Fall 
2023 K facet. This is cool fall 2023 K facet. And this is contrast. <laughs> I think this is one they didn't know where to put, so they just put it in a bundle called contrast fall 2023 K facet. Now, the way that this is released is we buy everything. So we buy all the yardage. We buy all the fat quarter bundles. There are also charm packs. There are also design rolls. Lots of pre-cuts come with it. So Sorry. And then from Northcott, we got Stonehenge Autumn Splendor. So Stonehenge has been around probably eight to 10 years or so, and it stays as a basic in our store with this kind of look. But every now and then they come out with collections that have more themes to them, but this is more of like the basic look. This one comes with a panel that's 23 inches wide. It's kind of like a branch. And then I was gonna show you Lori's new chunky thread, which of course sold out before I even had a chance to show you. She has new colors in her chunky thread, so if you collect her thread, these are the new eight colors. And we sell this as a set and individually, we will have more next Thursday in stock. We have new So Cute pins by Kathy Holden for Moda Fabrics. And she does enamel pins. She also does enamel charms, but I think we showed pin, Charms last week, this week we're showing pins. So do you think we could zoom in a little bit? So they're all different names. You would just search Kathy Holden So Cute. I think this one's like game show or something. And also by Kathy Holden, she has a charm bracelet. And so it's got like a mat, scissors, pattern, dress, sewing machine, needles, rotary cutter, and tomato pin cushion. Super cute. Now these, um, I do think the pins will stay in stock. The, what Moda told me, what my Moda sales rep told me is the So Cute Charm Bracelets. They're going to make a set number and then when they sell out, they sell out and then maybe like in nine months or later they will add another one. Okay, so now I am going to answer the remaining questions and then talk about next week. When will Quilted Witch ship? Late September. Chunky thread is used for crochet or knitting. Can chunky thread be used for binding? I don't think so, it's way too thick. Dragonflies for Donna. Would Aunt Grace Calicos make a good layer cake loop? Yes, that would look amazing. When will Sweetwater Vintage be in stock? February, so quite a bit away. Okay, we have some super chats. Candy Carpenter, she's been a member for two years. Lene Reese, she's been a member six months. And Jeannie Williams, she's been a member two months. And if you, we have some new members, uh, Jerry Campbell and September Baby. If you want to join our membership, you get access to behind the scenes and different sew alongs that we do. Um, can you go back up? Sorry. Camille Ross Kelly will be our guest next week. She is going to do a trunk show on the new Lighthearted Collection, which is here. So what she's going to do is she's going to show all the quilts she made using Lighthearted. That live stream will be 11 a.m. Central Time next week instead of 9. So 
Remember, next week, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, and then our September Jelly Roll Day will be 2 p.m. Central Time. So we're kind of changing it up, trying to find some new members, some new people to watch, just changing it up to be fun. Today, we are having a giveaway. We're gonna pick two winners to win these awesome Notion gift bags. So um, it's just something I put together that's fun. It's just a mix of all kinds of notions. But to enter to win, what I want you to do is tell me what your very favorite notion is. Like if you had to go to a abandoned island and all you had was your sewing machine and one notion, what would it be? Let me know. I hope you all have a great weekend. I will see you at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time next Friday for a lighthearted trunk show. Can't wait to see you and everybody have a great weekend.